Hello everybody and welcome back. Let's talk about the problem optimal account balancing on lead code. This problem is based upon the algorithm splitwise uses to simplify graphs. It is in fact an NP hard problem and in this video solution I'm going to discuss the easy intuitive way I approach the solution along with this observation and logic needed to code this up. The input given to us is a list of transactions and each of these transactions is a tuple of from, comma to, comma amount which says that from F we give out A money to T. Alright, what is the goal of this problem? The output problem expects is the number of minimum transactions required to settle the debt. In other words, we are trying to minimize the number of transactions that happen between these two from and two people. Alright, let's take an example. In the first tuple, we get 0, 1, 10, which means that from the node 0, we are paying out 10 rupees to the node 1. Now the second tuple says 2, 0, 5, which means that the graph looks something like this. Now in this case, the answer is 2, and there is no possible way we can minimize these two transactions into perhaps 1 or 0 transactions. Now how do we reach this conclusion? And what if there are simplifications that we can do? How do they look like? To do that, let's take another example. Alright, let's take the case of three nodes A, B and C. A pays 10 rupees to B, B pays 1 rupees back to A. Then B pays 5 rupees to C, and C pays 5 rupees back to A. Now given this graph, we want to minimize the number of transactions. How can we do that? The first thing we notice is that the transaction from A to B can be simplified a bit. A pays 10 to B and B pays 1 back to A, which means that we can combine both of these edges to give 9 in its place. Alright, we have already removed one edge, now what more can we do? Another simplification that we observe is that B pays C 5 rupees and C pays A 5 rupees again. C sort of acts as an intermediate node, not really taking any money. C just gets 5 and pays out 5 again. Which means that we can remove C from here and have an edge from B to A directly. So instead of us passing 5 rupees through C, we're just going to bypass that node and create a new edge. And now we can reduce it again because A pays B 9, B pays A 5 back, which means that A pays B. 4 rupees. We have simplified the graph a lot. We started off with this graph and now we have ended with this. Alright, let's try to formalize the logic we have seen before. Now let's zoom in on A and see what happens. A pays 10 rupees to B but it also gets 1 rupees from A and 5 rupees from C which means that it gets total 6 rupees from all other people and pays out 10 rupees. In other words, A gets a score of negative 4. Now what happens for B? Well, B gets 10 rupees from A, pays out 1 rupees and 5 rupees, which means that the total score of B is going to be plus 4. What about C? C gets 5 rupees and pays out 5 rupees, giving it a score of 0. One interesting point to note is that the sum of all of these values is going to give you zero. And that sort of makes sense. We are not letting in money from outside. These are just a group of friends and they transact in between them. So anyone that gains is equal to anyone that loses in total. Alright, now let's actually try to do our simplifications and see if this property still holds up. Now, the first simplification we did was that A pays B 10 and B pays 1 back to A, which means that we can convert this to a 9. Now, is this minus 4, 4 and 0 property still holding? Yes, it is. Alright, uh, let's do one more simplification as we have seen before. The C node is sort of an intermediate node, not really useful for us. So, we'll just create an edge from B to A directly of the value 5. Is the property still holding? Well, we've removed the zero node, but the minus four and plus four remain the same. And now we can do one more simplification and convert this to a four. And now this makes obvious sense. A pays B four rupees, so A gets minus four and B gets plus four. 
By doing this, we have found an interesting property, an invariant sort of. It is that the sum of inflow and outflow values for any given node always remains the same. Even as we change it across transactions, even as we remove uh, some transactions here and there from the graph, the value of the node, the score given by us, will always remain the same. Now, this is an interesting property because it has some consequences. And the first thing we observed was that zero nodes are essentially useless, right? We were able to remove the zero node without any consequences on the entire graph. We we're in fact able to simplify it a lot as we remove the zero nodes. The other property is that the graph total remains zero. Look, we started off with this graph and it looked complicated. It was complicated, but the graph total was zero initially and it was zero in the end as well. So maybe you can use these two points, these two consequences as sanity checks. All right, so now that we have found the invariant and its consequences, let's try to apply this to a more complicated example. In this case, we have total six nodes and a lot of edges and transactions to take care of. But what if we don't bother about the transactions at all? See, we already have the invariants in place. Let's calculate all of them. A minus 180, 60, 10, 200, 50, and minus 20. What if, what if we don't need to worry about these edges at all? All right, let's reformat this. Now we have a bunch of nodes on the left-hand side that want to give out money and a bunch of nodes on the right-hand side who want to receive money. How can we go about satisfying each of these nodes? Let's say that we start from the node B. Now B wants to pay out a total of 60 rupees. How can we make it pay 60 rupees? See, because we have removed all the transactions, right? We want to somehow add the transactions ourselves. So now let's say that B pays out 10 rupees to C. Now, why is this a good idea? This is a good idea because C needs exactly 10 rupees. And as soon as we give 10 rupees from B to C, C is completely satisfied. C is happy. It's like my debt has been paid. I'm good to go. But at the same time, B still needs 50 rupees more to give out. So let's say that B gives 50 rupees to D. Now at this point, B is also satisfied. B is satisfied because it had a total debt of 60 and it was able to pay it out because B paid 10 to C and 50 to D, right? Now D is still not satisfied, it still needs 150 more, but at this point of time, we've come to a simplification. We removed C and B completely. But maybe this is not the best possible choice. What if we instead paid 50 rupees to E? Because as soon as we do that, we can say that E needs 50 rupees exactly and B was able to pay 50 rupees to D, E exactly. So this means that now all of the three nodes, B, C and E are satisfied, which makes this an even better option. Okay? So what are we doing? We're doing a bunch of things. And the first thing is, we're trying to figure out a way to enumerate all the permutations and combinations. We don't know at any given point of time, which of them is the best one. So let's just enumerate every single thing, perhaps using backtracking and we'll enumerate every single permutation and combination and the goal and the goal is to reduce the number of nodes we have to deal with at each point of time. We'll try to have this node satisfied either on the left hand side or on the right hand side. We'll try to reduce the number of nodes we have to deal with at each point of time. So now with just these two points in mind, you can actually go ahead and code the solution now. All right, let's get started with the code. The first thing we'll do is keep a track of the scores for each of the nodes. So let's say score is a default dict of int values. Cool. Now we'll iterate over from to A in transactions. Basically, we're going to iterate over all of the transactions, extracting the from to and A values. Now for the score of F, we're going to reduce it by A amount since F gives out A rupees. And similarly, the score of T increases by A rupees. Once we're done with this, we want to extract out and we want to reduce the problem into these positive and negative cases. We'll have a list of storing uh, all the positive values and a list storing all the negative values. 
let's go ahead and do that so positive is going to be value for value in uh, score dot values will iterate over all the values extract the value and will write it only if the value is greater than zero now we'll do a similar thing for the negatives as well and we'll say that if the value is lesser than zero let's go ahead and add it to a negatives list so at this point we have filtered out all of these negative and positive values that's great right now we need to figure out a way to enumerate all the permutations and combinations what is a good way we can do that one possible way is to use recursion more specifically backtracking so we'll recurse on the positives and the negatives right what does each recursion do from what we saw we picked this node b first which is the first negative value so let's say uh, negative equals to negatives of zero we'll pick the first negative value and we were trying to find all the permutations and combinations with respect to these positive nodes right so let's say for positive and positives all right so as we iterate over the positive values we want to try and mix and match it with the negative value we have over here right so we have a bunch of conditions that we can take care of let's say if the value of positive happens to be the same as the negative value right what happens in this case this is the case where one node is wanting to give out five rupees and another node wants exactly five rupees that is like the best possible case for us we can just say hey continue don't worry about this case at all now we'll get to more tricky cases all right there's another condition that we want to take care of what if the positive value is greater than the negative value in that case the negative value is fully satisfied but the positive value is not so we'll need to take care of that and the, there is one more condition where the negative value is greater than the positive so we'll also need to take care of that and one thing we want to note is that every single time we do this recursion every time we, we iterate through this function our number of nodes will change in fact that is what we're trying to do we're trying to reduce the number of nodes that we have to deal with so here's what we'll do let's take the previous positives and we'll create new positives out of that and this is going to be positives dot copy right and we'll do the same for the negative values so we'll say new negatives is the same as negatives not copy now of these new positive and negative values i want to remove so we'll say new positive dot remove i want to remove this current positive value my hope is that i can completely remove this from the graph similarly for the new negatives ones i want to be able to remove this particular negative value this is my hope that i can remove these this positive and the negative value from their lists right and i can just create these new list and i'll pass it on to the next recursion right all right so if this positive is the same as the negative value what happens we have removed both of them values from the list so we're good to go if the positive value is greater than the negative then the negative value is satisfied so this removal makes sense but this removal does not make sense anymore because there is still some positive value left right negative was able to satisfy only a part of the positive value so here is what we'll do we'll say new positives dot append this positive value minus negative value or actually we'll do plus because of how we are dealing with signs here all right and similarly for the last case we have a case where the positive value is not enough to satisfy the negative value it's basically the flipped of the above so we'll say new negatives dot append positive plus negative at this point we have two lists that we have like new positives and new negatives that we can recurse with so let's say new positives and new negative cool uh, what's the goal of this recursion the goal of this recursion is to perhaps enumerate all the permutations and combinations keeping in mind that we want to reduce the number of nodes every single point of time that is we want to reduce the number of transactions we have so let's keep a track of count which will start from infinite and each point of time count equals to the min of count comma records basically from all of these positive values that we iterate over 
get me the best possible positive value that matches well with this particular negative value. Make sense? All right. At the same time, I'm going to return count plus one. Since we did indeed have a create an edge between this negative and this best positive value. We'll also write the base case saying that, you know what, if the positives, uh, positives and the negatives sum up to zero, then we can return zero. Because at that point, our graph is basically complete. We have satisfied all the nodes. All right, uh, I'm also going to recurse here. We can return this recursion, the positives and negatives. There are a bunch of issues here, by the way, that will fix. Okay, cool. So we have infinite over here. This should not happen. Okay, so I figured out the issue. It was a small issue. We had continue over here, which was preventing us from uh, recursing when the positive was equal to the negative value. So we just had to do pass over here and it runs for the current test case. We'll also see if it runs for the example test cases and looks like it's getting accepted. So let's go ahead and sum with this. And cool, we get it accepted with a runtime of two seconds and 13.8 megabytes of memory. One more interesting point, and we we're trying this just for fun, if, is that uh, if you convert this recursion to a dynamic programming problem, if you convert this backtracking to a DP, you'll actually be able to reduce your runtime by a lot. In any case, that's something uh, you can do as a bonus. And uh, yeah, so this is it for the problem, optimal account balancing.